Hi, this is the 3.2.1.2 section, structure of prokaryotic cells and of viruses. Uh, this is the specification and the bits and pieces that you need to know for this section. So if you want to uh, stop now and have a read, then please do. Okay, so eukaryotic cells versus prokaryotic cells. Uh, prokaryotes are similar to eukaryotic cells in that they have a plasma membrane, uh, which is similar, a cytoplasm, where the chemical reactions take place and the cytoplasm has lots of enzymes as well. Uh, prokaryotes also have ribosomes in order to produce proteins. The ribosomes are slightly similar, uh, slightly different, but we'll see that on the next slide. Um, prokaryotes are much smaller than eukaryotic cells, so if you used the light microscopes in the classroom, you would be able to see some of the components of eukaryotic cells. However, you probably wouldn't be able to visualize prokaryotic cells on uh, standard slides in the classroom. You would need an electron transport, uh, electron microscope to be able to see them. And prokaryotes have no nucleus, so you can see here, this is the nucleus of the eukaryotic cell. This here is the genetic material in a prokaryotic cell. We're going to have a look at that in more detail on the next slide. Uh, and prokaryotes have no membrane-bound organelles, so this often crops up in exam questions. So if you have to state the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, you won't get multiple marks for saying that eukaryotic cells have mitochondria, they have endoplasmic reticulum, they have Golgi. You have to just refer to these organelles as membrane-bound organelles. So the Golgi, the endoplasmic reticulum, the mitochondria, they're all membrane-bound. Chloroplasts are also membrane-bound. Um, so don't list all three of those and chloroplasts as individual marking points because you won't get numerous marks for it in um, a question that asks you for the differences. Okay, so this here is a prokaryotic cell, obviously a 3D uh, picture of a prokaryotic cell. I'm not expecting you to be able to draw 3D pictures, just very, very simple um, 2D diagrams uh, will be fine. Uh, we've got A here, which are the pili. Now these are different to this bit here, so don't get confused. Uh, the pili help the prokaryotes interact with one another, so later on, in the second year of A-level, you'll, um, you'll find out more detail about what these actually do and how they help the prokaryotes to attach to one another. Uh, we have ribosomes, which are these red dots within the cytoplasm. Now, their um, function is the same in prokaryotic cells as it is in eukaryotic cells. They're the site of protein synthesis. However, in prokaryotes, the ribosomes are smaller, so we say that they're 70S. In eukaryotes, they are 80S. So the smaller number, 70, means that the ribosomes are smaller in size. You must know that as a difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Uh, the nucleoid here is the genetic material, and it's a single circular chromosome, and it's all kind of bunched together in the middle of the cell. So it's just one huge circular chromosome that's all kind of been bunched in here. Um, now, this is a difference to the eukaryotic cells because in eukaryotic cells, you find linear chromosomes. So this one single circular chromosome. You have the flagella here, which looks like a tail. This provides motility, which means that it allows the prokaryote to move around. Uh, you can't use that as a difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells because you would also find flagella on sperm cells. So you wouldn't get a mark for that in the exam. So don't say that prokaryotes have flagella and eukaryotes exclusively do not because that's incorrect. Sperm do have them. Uh, we've got the cell wall here, this thicker layer. Now the cell wall prevents osmotic lysis. Osmotic lysis is the bursting of the cell as a result of water moving into it. So if you placed a prokaryote into pure water, it would fill with water, but it wouldn't burst. It would just swell and become turgid. So the cell wall stops it from bursting. 
Then we have the cell membrane here, which is very similar to the eukaryotic cell membrane. You'll learn a huge amount of that in the next topic. Um, and it controls the entry and exit of substances through various, uh, various methods. Okay, w something that isn't labeled on here, but you can see it, is the capsule. So this blue layer all around is the capsule. It's the outermost layer on your prokaryote. And what that does is it provides protection. Now, if you imagine that this capsule is essentially like uh, covering the entire prokaryote in Vaseline to make it more difficult for the immune system to catch it and kill it. That's a very simple analogy. But if that helps you remember, then go for it. Uh, we also have plasmids which are these small circular pieces of DNA. This is kind of pointing to a ribosome, but it's actually meant to be pointing to this little circle of DNA here. Um, you'll learn later on uh, one of the roles of those plasmids. At the minute, you just need to know that they're small circular pieces of DNA. Uh, and that's all the things that you need to know about the uh, composition of... Okay, viruses. Uh, Viruses are acellular, they're not cells, so they're not alive. They have a core of genetic material here, which could be DNA or RNA, depending on the type of virus. Here we've called it the viral genome because it's the uh, genetic material. The capsid here, the pink layer, is a protein coat, which is kind of coated. Uh, the inside of the virus and then we've got attachment proteins on the outside now these attachment proteins allow the pro the virus to attach to a host cell so viruses want to get into your body and they want to find a host cell now the reason they want to find a host cell is because they have to inject this genetic material into a host cell so for example a human cell in order to replicate. So viruses cannot replicate by themselves. They can't undergo cell division. They can't undergo mitosis. They don't do that. They have to inject this into a host cell. And the attachment proteins, because they're proteins, they have a specific structure. And the type of attachment protein on the outside of the cell determines the um, cell that it can actually attach to. So viruses that get into the human body uh, lots of them can only attach to specific cells and then depending on the cells that they attach to depend on the symptoms that you would then have from that viral disease. Uh, we don't need to know about these two things for A-level, so don't worry about them.